he leaves uncircumcised in heart. There's only the, the 12 tribes he, he redeemed. Okay. And that's in the New Testament and the Old Testament. Yeah. You will find no other people ever redeemed. It's in Luke chapter 1, verse 68, 69. He has visited and redeemed his people of the house of David, the tabernacle of David. And the Old Testament reveals that Jesus Christ would come manifest in the flesh to uh, restore the tabernacle of King David in Amos chapter 9, verse 8 through 15, that he would restore the tabernacle of David. Okay. Then you get to Acts 15, verse 14 through 18, those Gentiles, it says, are the tabernacle of David, tabernacle of King David. So all the uh, Christianity religion, and plus they put a white Jesus up. And the Bible says he's a dark skinned man, black man, woolly hair, skin like burnt bread. Now the image of Jesus that they, that's renowned worldwide is false teaching. Yeah, there's false definitely doctrine. been, I mean, I don't, I don't, that's why I wear a lot of that stuff. I don't, I don't think faith is something to be uh, capitalized on. And, uh, right. I mean, I think that, that that right there makes With sense. organized religion. Which is a lot of people's issues with a lot of that. Like, I don't know, yeah. that conversation about it, because it's, it's you get into like those mega churches and stuff right, like that, and right. people have all these contentions with it. But like, I mean, at the same point, that's on those people. But like, it's not really any different than an entertainer that sings right. or dances yeah. or does anything. Those people just would rather spread the word of their faith in an entertaining manner. Right. And I think that's why these people make money. So I've Smart never, man, like, Chase. Yeah, I've never really had an issue with yeah. these kind of things. Just because to me, it's the same. It's depending on what subject you want to hear. Do you want to hear something on the radio that's talking about? fornication all the time or do you want it to hear somebody that's just as excitable talk about some form of spiritual connection yeah i don't know one's obviously more positive than the other you know and they made it so entertaining people pay yeah to hear it yeah they would act, they pay yeah and give a lot of their income yeah to hear it yeah and to follow it they travel and come from afar and everything yeah. you know yeah. but the real truth is it's uh Lamentation, it's mourning, it's sorrow, it's bitter and sweet. Okay. Ezekiel said that, chapter 2. It's, he said, the, uh, the Holy Spirit said, eat the whole roll of God's word. Yeah. He said, it's bitter and sweet. Yeah. I could, I could sweet believe. in your mouth and bitter in your gut and yeah. your belly. Yeah. Yeah. I could believe that. I mean, I feel like life in, in, as a reflection of that statement yeah. is fairly true. I mean, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of that. And it's like you're just saying, it's like if you go through your whole life, like there's a solid chance, unless you were raised in a very specific manner, that you're going to have things that you need forgiveness for or whatever. So, yeah. I mean, and, those and God's, more bitter moments. God, God's judgment is harsh yeah. on sin. Yeah. You think about it, He sent His Son to become that sacrifice, and He put all sin upon His Son. Any, whatever sin a man can do. Right? Yeah. And uh, he put it all on his son. And so God's judgment towards our flesh is it must die. See, he killed his son. His son had a sacrifice. Yeah. But his son is not the only one to be sacrificed. Yeah. All sons must be sacrificed in like manner of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's why you don't get people coming to. That's that road to straight and narrow, few to be to find it. Yeah. You know, that's why you don't have a bunch of people running to him. Yeah. Because the flesh dreads that path. As 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 a as a one way. And there's no return. Yeah. You know. So many fail to go uh, endure that path, you know, and endure until the end, Christ Jesus says. Some have 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 got there and then they got strayed. They went back. They stopped, you know, uh, got comfortable uh, and returned. The Bible declare, tells us not to return the same way. Because even the wise man, he gives you examples. When Christ was born into the earth, the wise man, you heard of the three wise men. He told them, not re don't return to Herod. Don't return the same way you came. So when they met the Lord, they did not return the same way. They had to go another way. Anybody that comes to Christ and you meet Christ, the truth, the, the way the scriptures is written, you are not to return the same way. And that's why people, when they were, the ones that got healed, made whole, Christ said, go and sin no more. At least a worse thing come upon you. Yeah. And John, you remember reading that? Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. I do, vaguely. 
But he actually said that in John 5. He said, go and sin no more. Yeah. At least a worse thing come upon you. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, and that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's where a lot of it, uh, when I did when I, when I did my, my read, most recent read-through, it's like, when you, your life does get better in an odd sense when you make a commitment to, to live by those principles, I think, the way that, especially with Christianity, how it's laid out. So That's just the thing. Are you in covenant? See, there's a difference. See, Christianity claimed to live by the principles. You claim to be Christian, right? Christian? Yeah. But if I ask what faith, you would say, what, I mean, would you say apostolic or Baptist or Catholic? I wouldn't know how to None of that, yeah. Those but you heard of those. You heard That's of those, where it right? Gets confusing to me. right. I read the Bible and right. I take the, the, the words that it says and I try and apply them. Right. Not only through my own interpretation, but through the interpretation it can't be done. that I gather from others. It can't be done, Chase. Yeah. Because it's, it's designed by covenant. It's a covenant, because it says, the, and uh, for example, uh, Leviticus 18:5, the man that does these things must live in them to keep God's statutes and judgments and commandments and testimonies. He must live there. Yeah. That's a covenant. Yeah. That's a, you know what a covenant is? A marriage. Yeah. That's not like. But what does that mean? Like physically, like I'm talking about living in the living with those principles, living in that. Uh... Well, your nature. It's a nature. When we talked about earlier the divine nature. Yeah. That's a covenant. Yeah. The nature of Christ is a, Christ Himself is a covenant. Okay. Jesus Christ. Yeah. To the yeah. Gentiles or the twelve tribes, He's a covenant. Gotcha. And you know a covenant is a marriage. Yeah. A mutual agreement between two parties. Yeah. So the Christian world, the outer, I call that the outer church. They in outer darkness. They they confess to try to live by those principles of the Bible, which is you can't do it. Yeah. You can't do it. You have to go through the veil. Through the veil. You heard of the veil. Yeah. The Bible said when Moses is read to this present day, there's a veil where people cannot understand the Bible. You can't understand. I told you earlier, you can't understand the old without the new. You can't understand the new without the old. But that veil has to be removed. The veil, we have a veil on our mind, yeah. which is our heart, uh, that you can't see God. So Jesus Christ came really to destroy that veil of the flesh. That was a, a wall between us and God that we could not get to God because of our nature. It was solely our nature yeah. that we're born with. Yeah. That nature itself is a veil. Yeah. It's called the flesh. So Christ had to crucify the flesh. He had to come in the likeness of sinful flesh and become a sacrifice, a legal sacrifice at that. Legal. So Christ is the, the legality of this earth, this world. You see the police right here. You see what man is doing. But man is doing his own laws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's become yeah, a law yeah, unto himself. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you agree with that? Definitely. Yeah. It's, not like, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. troubling, I think. Even I'm 34. Uh -huh. And even in my 34 years on earth, I feel like I've seen a just a, a massive like, decline. sinking and decline yeah. in morality. Right. And, right. Uh, you, that's right. Care and, which I think is right. directly connected to some of those, you know, a rejection of of faith yeah honestly right so, right i mean so you can you can almost it's not even it's it's pretty easy to hear it and as we're talking it, right now they're they're coming up with laws to ban the bible yeah in utah and in other places yeah, as I we're talking right now even joe biden is talking about uh coming against the constitution you heard him you heard that lately I he's talking really, about I, the taking away the 14th and really and freedom of speech yeah, yeah as I we're talking heard, right I now heard, that's yeah. in the mix yeah yeah, they're, they're yeah, working on that right now. Yeah, no, it's it's weird. I don't, I don't think there should be any kind of. I don't know. I don't feel like that's. It's not an appropriate pathway to a belief. I don't think being forced to either believe or not believe in a particular. Did you idea. wear the face mask under, under their mandates? Did, did you uh, wear the I, face? For the most part. That was forced. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot of yeah. Yeah. See. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was forced. But that's what they're doing. They're, man is fighting against God, the Creator. Yeah. That's what His laws do. That's in uh, Psalms 94. Uh, the throne of iniquity can have no fellowship with God's holy, holy throne. Yeah. With His righteousness. So you got righteousness versus wickedness, iniquity. God is righteous and, and good, and man is trying to make his own way. That was the Tower of Babel, like in Genesis 11. Yeah. All, I think we're very all 
nations were trying to be one. Yeah. That's your Christianity today. Yeah. I, 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 always, I think about the Tower of Babel a lot when I think about modern day society because yeah. of... Uh, like the like the idea of the internet and things like yeah. this and this mass communication you Good would point. think that it would be an easy route for all of us to uh love one another and be peaceful but it does the exact opposite it's it, almost like we're being yeah scattered. it can't happen it can't happen yeah only only through covenant uh and remember covenant is a is the dna yeah it's being birthed into the kingdom of god yeah but remember the, just the whole thing of jesus christ his ministry was like Matthew 4 17 repent for the kingdom of God is at hand his whole ministry was about the kingdom of God John the Baptist ministry he baptized them in water but he likewise said repent for the kingdom of God is at hand and he yeah. pointed to people to Jesus Christ yeah and that kingdom of God is all is the new heaven and new earth it's a whole nother world okay. which aka we can call that covenant in order to, to have covenant with God you have to understand the land yeah to walk in the land. The whole point with the children of Israel, the 12 tribes, they polluted the land, which was covenant. The Sabbath is always in the land. You got people today, they think the Sabbath is on Saturday. Some people say Sabbath is Sunday. Yeah, I just actually got, I received a pamphlet in my mailbox that was talking about that actually. Because yeah. apparently isn't it originally supposed to be Saturday? It's, no, it's, it's none not. of that. It's, okay. it's the land, it's Zion. Okay. See, that's the land of the Lord. Okay. There's no sad thing about it. There's no Sabbath without the Lord. When he came, he said he was the Lord of the Sabbath. Yeah. He told us. So entering into Christ, his body, that's our rest, which is the Sabbath. The resting place is the Sabbath. Now when you get to Genesis 2, when the Lord was, that was prophecy. When it said the Lord rested on the seventh day, that was a prophecy. Yeah. That wasn't until Jesus Christ came and became that sacrifice. Yeah. That's God's house. The man, him being the son. So in order to have a relationship with the Father, you got to receive the Son, the yeah. sacrifice. Yeah. Enter into the Son, which is the body, or the land, the land of the Lord, which is the kingdom of God. Yeah. That's going through the veil. That's your Sabbath right there. That's his rest, which is a covenant. It's an everlasting covenant. It's forever. Yeah. You know? And in his land, there is no end. I mean, the growth, as far as growth, in God, see, man is limited. You know, we come into this earth, you, you're already dying once you come through the womb. You, now you're headed to death. Yeah. Right? But when you're born again in God, it's called life, a resurrection life. And God is so beyond us, there's no end to life. Yeah. There's no end to it. So you get into immortality, eternal life. It flows like a river. And it grows and grows and grows and grows. So man don't understand what life is because he's dying. So that's why we go to funerals. That's why they have caskets. Yeah. You know? Graveyards. And the kingdom of God is none of that. None of that. There's not even uh, any more crying. He tells us in Revelations, he will wipe all tears from our eyes. Yeah. That's the joy of uh, the Holy Ghost. The, the joy of, of uh, salvation. Yeah. The only member few can experience. Few can experience. Uh, everybody else is blind. Yeah. Everybody else is deprived of yeah, it. Yeah, it's. Uh, I feel like it's fairly prevalent when after you've if you've read through the Bible, for instance. I think it's fairly prevalent when you come across individuals that haven't. Or, I'm not saying like I'm by no means like uh, some kind of expert or theology like theologist or anything on it. You know, but. It's fairly obvious when you have somebody that hasn't read that and tried to embrace those, the word, like, at all. Because you see a, a, such an attachment to uh, the material and an attachment to the flesh, I guess, as, as you would have it or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So. And remember, that's death. Yeah. The flesh is death and darkness. We're born into that. Yeah. When we're celebrating birthdays, yeah. they don't know what they're doing. They're celebrating death. Yeah. That's why... Job, I don't know if you remember, you, yeah, did you read through I the Bible? The story, Job, yeah, yeah, Job 3, he cursed his, his, the day of his birth. Yeah. And Jeremiah cursed the day of his birth. So when we uh, line these scriptures up, the day of our birth is the day we enter into curses. Yeah. You know, because some people come out, what, blind or deformed, you know, yeah. you're entering into curses. But I always, I always found it interesting.